Hey, what's up, moms? It's your girl, Sharita, the Behavior and Literacy Strategies, coming at you from the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute, where you can find solutions for your child's behavior and literacy challenges. Now, y'all know that I'm a tutor and a coach, but first and foremost, I am a mom, okay? Now, first, I am Sharita. I am me. <laughs> and I have a family. I have a husband who's my high school sweetheart. Since 1997, that's where we met, and two beautiful daughters, one of which is a 15-year-old and the other one is five years old, okay? So we have two different, two daughters, two different age groups, um, and there's a lot going on in the outside world that I know as a mom that a lot of y'all may have some issues with and don't want your child to... Uh, kind of be influenced by what's going on in the outside world. Now, you can take that either way you want, if wherever it applies, okay? I'm not here to, to debate any social issues, okay? I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to represent uh, moms who want to have more influence over uh, what their children are learning and what is going on in their children's minds? What are they thinking? What are they actually absorbing? Okay. So I had I started writing down some things, and then it's like I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing <laughs> because I started realizing there are tons of things that um, I do, my husband and I do, and I as their mom do to um, uh, raise our children in a way that we see fit. And to take, um, uh, have a stronger influence on our children so that they have their own minds. They think we have to plant seeds first. And we have to teach them. As they get older, they start to have a head on their shoulders where they think for themselves and they can make good decisions, right? So, um, let's check it out. My plants. I took my pepper plants from outside and brought them inside. I got pepper plants behind me. I got greens growing and everything so it's a lot going on my family room downstairs is this we call the family room has we just started adding the plants um to it okay so first things first moms okay don't be so worried about what is going on in the outside world don't be so worried about your child instead of worrying and being scared um if there's something you particularly don't agree with you don't want your child to be uh, focused on um, is it the way that things are in social media like our kids can see anything you know what I mean sometimes um, with YouTube you can have it on the kids setting but your child still sees something that you wasn't okay with okay so whenever we our children are part of the outside world some things can still slip through so the first thing is don't worry understand your influence as a mom that you um, uh, are the center, okay? You are your child's foundation. So you can decide how you want your child to be exposed to things and what you want your child to learn, okay? So the first question, hi, Mariah, welcome, welcome. How you doing today, girl? This is a really good topic. Um, and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of moms. We just got to discuss this. And y'all feel free to comment below um, to some things that you do so that your child doesn't get swept up by the outside world and social media. Okay? So first things first, ask yourself, what do I want my child to learn? Uh, I'm doing good, Mariah. I'm doing great, honey. Um, and I'm glad you're doing good too. I'm going to run out to this store after, right after and do some shopping for Thanksgiving. You know that's coming up. So we got to shop ahead of time because I'm not trying to be in here without what I want. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm about to do that. Grab some stuff to make a smoothie too. So that's what I'm doing today. Right? But thanks for asking, girl. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're doing good. So first thing, Mariah, we, we have to ask ourselves what we want our child to learn. That's such a powerful question to ask. Uh, in the beginning so you're not really focused on what the outside world is trying to teach your child and I have some examples um, here right what the outside world is trying to teach your child because you're like a mama 
and what do I want my child to learn? You focus on a growth uh, mindset with it. Focus on growth and how you want your child to grow and what you're adding instead of focus on worrying about what you're trying to block out, okay? Because our children, their minds are occupied by whatever. So we want to expose our children to what we want them to learn. After a while, that starts to become bigger than what what they may be observing in the outside world. I'm going to talk to you about how to do that. So number one, what do you want your child to learn? Number two, what do they want to learn? What do they want to learn, right? They're curious about so many things. My daughters are curious about so many things. Like my oldest daughter is curious about hair. Uh, she's curious also about making music. She started making music on her iPad. And we play her music in the house. She plays her own music. You know, my youngest daughter is interested in dinosaurs, you know what I mean? And she has a bunch of ton of dinosaurs in her room and she identified all of them at a very young age before she even really talk good. She was one year old. She was she was saying the names, it wasn't perfect, of all these different kinds of dinosaurs. My oldest daughter was very interested in the solar system when she was little and, and cutting up uh, material to make clothes for her dolls, you know? Like, what do they want to learn? As moms, we watch our children and we see where their interests lie. And whatever they find there, we find them kind of uh, gravitating to as far as their interests, we can put more of that in their environment, okay? Now their mind is being occupied. That's what the whole point of this is about. Now their mind is being occupied. If our children's minds are idle and they are gravitating to what's on social media and what's in the outside world, and that's what they're being fed every day, their mind is being occupied by things that we have no control over. We don't know how they're absorbing it. We don't know how how they are, what their perspective is coming from. You know what I mean? Because it's from the outside world. And everything that's going on in the outside world is not for the best. It's not for the best for our children. They're just people. We're people too. But mom, this is your house. Mariah, this is your house. This is your family. Number one, what do I want my child to learn? Number two, what do they want to learn? Number number three, um, this is not even naughty, y'all. I'm just talking. <laughs> my home is a learning environment. It always has been. When my oldest daughter was young, around three years old, I turned my dining room into her little school area, right? And now I teach and coach students from home, and I've taught my my own children constantly. They're always coming to me, uh, um, reading things to me, and then spelling things and ask me if I got it right. And I'm like, close, you know what I mean? And having them think, you know what I mean? So they're always learning about stuff and we're always researching things and they have their action plans and things that they're learning up around the house, you know what I mean? Constantly. My youngest daughter is five years old. She's always writing notes and putting it on her door. The last one was welcome to my party. She spelled party, and uh, P-A-R-I-T-Y, uh, -T P-A-R-I-T-Y, right? So this is, this is how you learn also how your children learn how they spell because if they're always spelling and writing notes and putting things up, you see, okay, that, that she almost got it, but she added an I. And wondering why would she add an I? What is she hearing, right? So, so a learning environment means that our children's mind is always being occupied and it's on autopilot it happens without us even have to having to do anything that's the beautiful thing okay remember to comment below um some things that you do um and i'm going to remind y'all about this uh throughout the time um comment below or write some things down hang it up in your house things that you do that that um you want your child to learn and you want your child to be exposed to some things you might want them to be exposed to, write it down, hang it up, start doing it, okay? Next, I give them, and we give them not just what they want, but also what they need. And a lot of times, what they need is the most prevalent. Like, that's that's what mostly what we give our children. We look at our children, and they're cus it's customized to them. Jazzy has different needs than Maya. Jazzy is 15. She has different interests, right? Um, Maya is five. She has different interests. What do they need? And what do they need that in their own growth plan to grow them to the next step?
okay? What may be getting in their way of their success. So giving them what they need and having them focus on what they need instead of focus on what they want. Want, want, want is not always what's best, especially for children when they're growing up. A lot of times they don't know what they want. They might be thinking right now, this is what I want. But when you expose them to something, and even if at the beginning, then they not they fight in it, but you feel like they should learn it at the end, it turns out being what they want. This is what I keep noticing with my children, okay? My youngest five-year-old uh, one day just said to me, Mommy, thank you for teaching me how to spell, right? And now she wants to spell things all the time, right? So as moms, we can't overindulge and just let our children do what they want all the time. We have to think. What do they need? While I'm doing that, while we're doing that with our girls, we'll always, uh, somebody called me right now. All right. <laughs> what they need. Next, I keep them busy. They're busy. When they come home from school or Saturdays, Sundays, they both have things that they're doing. They're not on social media all day and they're not watching TV all day. They have chores. They have activities. Um, I, we go, I'll get up in the morning on Saturday and, and I'm like, all right, after breakfast, we're going to head out to the backyard because we've been growing food in the backyard. You know what I mean? They, I always have them, ha always have them doing something. They do have downtime, but there's requirements, right? My five-year-old yesterday, um, you should have seen him, Mariah. Like, like I was in the bathroom, uh, I was in the bathroom, uh, taking a shower and I came out um and i'm looking for her to, to get ready for school and she was ready she was downstairs she was sitting on the couch she had her legs crossed like she she was she just got home from work she had a remote in her hand she was watching tv right <laughs> and she was chilling before school she done got dressed and everything now that's that's a good thing like you got dressed you're ready for school and you waiting on mommy so you just go to sit down on the couch chill watch yourself a little tv but her room wasn't clean. There are requirements here, y'all. So I said to her, I said, what you doing watching TV and your room not clean? And then she said, oh, and then she turned it off. She wanted to clean her room. You know what I mean? So they have their downtime. She know how to turn the TV on for a reason. She got her little show she liked to watch. We have to prove, you know what I'm saying? All three of us, my husband, me, and my oldest daughter, we all watch it to see what she's looking at to make sure it's right. Okay, <laughs> all right, but there are requirements. So, I but I keep them busy most of the day when they come home, and most of the, most of the day on Saturday or Sunday, they are doing things that they are learning from, and they are growing, um, and it's growing them. Okay, so chores, responsibilities, um, and my youngest daughter she has responsibilities too, not just clean up her room. She's the one that runs to put things where they're supposed to be. So my oldest daughter might clean up the living room and she's like, here, might put this in the kitchen um, on a counter. You know what I mean? Because she can't reach the cabinet. So go, go put this, you know what I mean? So she's always telling her to go and do things. She, and then also, um, we have some food growing indoors now. Her job is to turn off the lights and then turn them back on in the morning before she goes to school, Right. So they have responsibilities. While they have responsibilities, while they have responsibilities, they are learning. They are learning how to do this themselves independently one day. That's occupying their mind. The more of that is that's in their mind, the less of that the outside world is something that they are absorbing and focusing on because they're constantly learning and constantly growing and they are hands on. I'm going to pause for a second and ask this question. Because this is what inspired me to talk to y'all today about this. The, the question, right, Mariah, um, that we need to start asking our children nowadays a lot, okay, is what do you want to create? What do you want to create? Our children are creators, especially when they're young. They, and they have a lot more time than we do <laughs> when we get older. You know what I mean? We still create things and everything. But when they're young... They're young, they're, they're vibrant, they're always thinking, they're so curious, they will do this and do that. What do you want to create? What do you want to make? Okay? Uh, my oldest daughter for years, every every summer, I was like, what, what do you want to create? This? She said, I want to create a volcano. You know what I'm saying? 
What do you want to do this summer? What a project do you want to do, you know, that, that you're going to learn from, okay? What do you want to create? The, being in creation mode is a beautiful thing. When you create something from start to finish, like when girls learning how to grow food and learning how to make a soil, make compost, how to put a seed in there, how the sun works together, how when we, we go and move the plant, there are worms underneath. Like, if this seeing at the end, the plant is fully grown, now it's bearing fruit. And now they can go in the backyard and they can, they're supposed to be going out there to look at the plants, check on them. If they see any red tomato, okay, there's like a couple cherry tomato plants up there right here, they be tearing them up. And then the youngest one, who was, you know, trying to be picky with eating vegetables. But if she, in front of a raw plant, she picking off a green bean or a sugar snap pea or a cherry tomato, she popping it in her mouth, you know? So they be back there eating, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> I'm like, go out there, give me some tomatoes and give me some parsley, give me some thyme. I'm going to make some spaghetti. Go out there, get that stuff. And they come back and, and they got some tomatoes, but they were eating the rest of them, okay? <laughs> I'm like, what you doing? <laughs> Right? So what do you want? Creation is a beautiful thing for our kids to get into and to watch something grow. And from start to finish, that's growth within them as well. All right? So that leads me to, when I, when I say chores and responsibilities, one of the things that's responsibility is, you know, when it's time to cook dinner, when they're cooking together, right? Everybody's doing something, Okay? And baking. They love to bake. We baked a lot of different kind of desserts, you know, cakes, cornbreads, biscuits, muffins, cookies. And my I posted on Facebook a couple times. Maya gets the flour all over her face. She's having it in her hands, on her arms, her shirt, right? But that's creation. That's occupying their minds. Okay. Now while they're doing this, they're not sitting down playing a game, uh, looking into social media, watching YouTube videos all day, you know what I mean? And whatever every, everybody else is doing with their lives, they're concerned with that because they are creating something from scratch. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have to occupy their minds in a way that's going to grow them. And they are growing it within themselves and they're being connected to their environment, Okay. It, it, that's so important, okay? It's also, like I said, occupying their minds. So we got um, uh, cooking and baking we do together. It's a couple of things that, that I don't just listen to a couple of things. The library, going to the library, okay? My girls love the library. So going in there, checking out books, having some time to sit there and read, going to the little events sometimes that they be having at the library, right? And we just added this because we get kind of bougie with it. Me and my oldest daughter, really. The youngest one, she just be eating, okay? So we start we start a book club on Saturdays. We all going to sit together and we're going to be reading to each other. Now, we all have different books. Me and my oldest daughter can read the same book. Um, but we all will be reading a little bit of our own books that we're reading ourselves. And then the youngest one gets to read to us what well, she's a book that she checked out from the library. Then we're going to get it going. You know, we're in the middle of that. We got a charcuterie board. Am I pronouncing it right? <laughs> because me and my oldest daughter love that. I did it for the first time last year at Thanksgiving and she absolutely loved it. So that's our little book club, right? And we can't wait. We're going to be going to the Aldi's up the street and get, they got all kind of cute little things to put on the, the jacuterie board. And we're going to sit and read and snack and eat and have a good time, right? While we're doing that, are they on social media? Are they focusing on the outside world and doing everything? No, we're just, we're just doing things that we love, okay? Think about what you love. Think about things that, that you're interested in that you want to share with your children. Think about things that they're interested in that they want to talk about and you can learn from too. What do we want our children to be learning? What do, what do they want to learn that they want to share with us? What can they be curious and amazed by? What can they totally immerse themselves in? This is my, this is my passion. I can go 
like hours on this. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, my youngest was dinosaurs and my oldest um, making music. You know what I mean? They can really focus on and get into and be happy with what they're doing, right? That's occupying their mind. See how this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? All right. So next, uh, family talks. Uh, we all sit around and we talk. Now, this is where the outside world comes in because... My oldest daughter is in high school and she's, she sees what's going on. She hears what's going on. You know what I mean? She has questions. We're always sitting around each other and just talking about stuff. She see what happened, what's going on with the news, what's going on with the elections, going on Black Lives Matter, right? And we sit around and we just talk. We talk to each other. Now, whether you understand it or not, um, because the kids get older, they try to be independent, they try to be their own people. But our children still look up to us, and our children still admire us. And if they are learning from us, and we are talking about issues, and they're teaching, we're teaching them things that they were curious about, or they're curious about now, and they never knew, they will want to learn more from you. I know this as a mom, but I know this is also as, um, from my students. The way that when I start talking to them, they perk up and they and their eyes open. I've had talks with kids over the years. And, and one thing I'm going to tell y'all right now, I've never talked to my students about things that I feel like their parents wouldn't agree with or their mom wouldn't agree with. I never do that. I never have done that, okay? Whatever beliefs or cultural culture, uh, traditions, uh, cultural views, whatever the parents have, that's always respected because I love my students, but these are not my children. Do you understand that? All right. I think people get it tripped up. They think that they should be able to teach their children whatever they want to. Okay. Now, um, if you and mom agree, you know what I'm saying? That's different. Okay. But when I'm talking to my students, I talk to my students about life. I talk to my students about how to keep going when times get tough. I tell them I've been through some stuff in my life too, y'all. And the reason I'm so tough on y'all because I know the only way that I got through it, the only way that I'm here is I had to tell myself I got this. I couldn't give up. I couldn't just sit down somewhere. I had to keep moving. I had to keep expanding. I had to check myself. I had to be aware of myself. I had to have goals. I had to grow myself. And this is what I'm teaching y'all. So when you talk to your children, and they learn from you. They want to learn from you. Now you've created a safe space for them to come to you and talk about things that they're learning and seeing on the outside world that they need some kind of structure and guidance to. Do you understand? All right? So if their mind is being occupied a lot, but they're also family talks. And this is where we get to learn. They get to ask questions. They get to say how they feel and what they think about what's going on and then you could ask them the most beautiful question in the world that you can ask a child when they are growing learning trying to figure things out the most beautiful question in the world you can ask you can, you can understand how they're feeling and stuff and then you can ask them why when you say why that give that creates an opening for them to now expand on how they feel now they're going to a, a higher level because that's what they learn about themselves. Why do I even think this? What happened that made me think this way? What is making, what else do I want to learn? What, how strongly do I feel about this? And I'm talking about, and I know what's going on outside world, y'all. I'm talking about any, any topic, any topic, okay? And for them to talk more about it and talk more about it, Talking aloud is something that's so good for kids to be able to, to do and say their views on things, okay? So it's not just about what we feel. It's also learning about how they feel. But a lot of times kids are talking based off of what they heard. When they start to talk and express themselves and to say why they think like that and to ask questions and have a, a, a growth conversation, that makes them feel so good, okay? So these family talks are important, okay? Next, 
Um, oh yeah. So <laughs> there was a teacher at my daughter's school uh, last year. And I heard her because um, we were, you know, virtual learning. It was virtual learning. Was it last year or year before? She's not working anymore. They fired her because she was uh, talking to the students uh, very passionately about her own views. I heard her one day say, all right, we want to have a discussion today about, I think it was, um, I heard her talk about LGBTQ uh uh, rights and issues and i heard her talk about the election or donald trump versus biden right um president biden so i so i heard i heard her talking about uh these topics so you know my ears perked up right but the way she was talking about it she said she's going to do a discussion she asked the kids how they felt some were agreeing with her some weren't agreeing with her and then I heard her get frustrated and I heard her push her views and I heard her try to convince the kids, the students, that they should feel the way she feels. All right. So I'm listening to all this happening because um, it was virtual learning. Jazzy was having virtual learning in the living room, right? She was set up in the living room. Maya was set up in the kitchen. Mama was in between them both. Okay. Um, so I heard everything, but I wasn't worried because I talk with my daughter and my husband and I, we all talk and have, we have discussions about this all the time. So when, so I know how Jasmine feels. I know how myself and my husband, uh, feels and, and she's not getting this for the first time from her teacher. Okay, without the time and the opportunity to to talk about how she feels and what she thinks and uh, expressing herself. So I know my daughter had a a good foundation, a good two feet to stand on. And I know how she felt about it because we've had a lot of talks about this and she's talked and we listened. Okay. But the problem I had was that the teacher was really working to push her own views. And the kids were starting to feel uncomfortable. Some of them, so you could tell they were kind of uncomfortable. Some of them decided to talk, but they decided not to talk, right? She's, they were actually putting their comments through chats. I, I, heard, I heard her responding to the comments. I'm like, she bugging, right? This is not how you should be doing. Number one, you don't know what, uh, where these kids come from and their, and, and their parents' views, their family views their cultural traditions, you you know you don't know anything about these children and their parents. So you're not supposed to be talking about this <laughs> in a classroom. And you're not supposed to be pushing your views on the kids and telling them if they're right or wrong. That's not how you have a discussion. If you were to have a discussion, then it's best as a teacher to kind of just uh you know, you put the question out there and it, every time a child says their views, their views are understood, appreciated, valued. You don't have to agree. We have different thoughts, right? Oh, this is what you think. Oh, okay. Why do you think that way? Okay. What? Why do you think that? Okay. And then what do you think? Okay. All right. So I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Anybody else? You know what I'm saying? No. That's not the case. Now, this is what I say is very important. How do I keep my child, my children from being swallowed up by social media in the outside world? When you have teachers, this is not, I'm not bashing teachers. I was a teacher myself. I was a special education teacher. And for a time, I was a resource pullout uh, teacher. So I'm not bashing teachers at all. You have some really amazing teachers out there, but there are adults. There are people out there who have different thoughts and they they are out there saying whatever they want to your child okay so um apparently she got fired because somebody found out she was doing that right but again i wasn't worried because i i know that my daughter had a strong head on her shoulders it has a strong head on her shoulders and i know her viewpoint and we all talked about it okay so that's why um yeah, so the teacher's fire. I wrote that down. Okay. <laughs> Having family talks. So I'm going to go through it. 
And let me know how you would feel if you were um, doing virtual learning and you heard uh, a teacher conducting a discussion in this way, okay? What would you think and how you feel? What do you think about teachers um, actually um, having those kinds of discussions with children um, in that way, okay? All right, so what do you say? How do I keep my child uh, from being swallowed up by social media and outside world and having them be influenced by what's going on in the outside world? We worry so much about protecting our children from the outside world and keeping them in. Makes you want to homeschool them, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Makes you want to homeschool them. I mean, I've, done, I've done that in the past too. My oldest daughter has been homeschooled uh, for part of her education, right? So it makes you want to homeschool because it's like it's some stuff out here that you don't want your child exposed to. And it could be anything, okay? So, um, number one, what do my I want my child to learn? Decide what you want your child to learn. Number two, what do you what do they want to learn about? Okay? And and create a space where they can come and ask you anything and say they want to learn about anything, right? And it could be figured out. How do we make that happen? Um, uh, my oldest daughter um, wanted to learn how to bake, right? Uh, let's let's bake. We've, I've been baking since she was little. But if she come in and say, you know, you know, it'd be real good. We made chocolate chip cookies. Um, we made uh, cookies that had blueberries and chocolate chips in them. Let's try it. You know what I'm saying? But they just be open to whatever they want to create. They can think and they can create things. Okay, these are future. Um, professionals, future chefs here, y'all, uh, uh, future artists, okay, future athletes, future painters, future scientists, okay, so when they're children, this is what their mind should be occupied with, what they want to learn, what they want to create with their minds and their hands, okay, and we provide an environment so that they can do that. Next, um, again, my home is a learning environment. That was next. After that, I give them not just what they want, but also what they need. What's going to be good for their mind, their spirit, their soul, honey. I'm giving them what they need, okay? And then um, for what they want, um, there are requirements here, okay? So if they want something, they work for it. They don't just get whatever they want just by asking it. And then we as parents feel obligated to buy them whatever they want. They we know they know that we have requirements and and the famous question in this house was um, what do I need to do to earn this is what I want mom dad may I have this what do I need to do to earn this okay have your child start saying that then they get to work then they get it that's a game changer right there okay um, keep them busy I keep them busy okay <laughs> throughout the day they don't have a lot of time. Where they spending hours playing a game or hours in their phone or or sleeping after they get home from school, they sleeping all day, stuff like this. I'm not saying it's always been perfect. I've had to work on my kids in different areas to get here, y'all. So I'm not sitting up here saying I have all this, this was this is just how it was the whole time. Okay, I'm a mom, nobody's perfect. We learn as we go along. So I keep them busy with chores. They have chores, they have responsibilities, um, age appropriate. Um, we cook, we bake together, we do projects together, like growing our own food. That's something we just, I, I wanted to do. I started myself and then I included the girls and it's been great. We've been actually eating the food that we've been growing, okay? We, we go to the library. Um, we have a book club starting on Saturdays with a jacuterie board, okay? Um, and we have family talks. I just talked about that where my oldest daughter can ask questions and talk about anything. A lot of times she talk about stuff that she saw in school. She talk about things that she see her friends doing, um, with boys that she's concerned about. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, relationships, you know, she has questions about these things. Okay. And she talks to us about it and we give her guidance. Okay. Um, and uh, I talked to you about that teacher in school, okay? <laughs> and then the last thing, let's see. Um, oh, we watch movies together. We watch movies 
together. So we sit down and we, we make popcorn and we sit down and we watch movies together too. You know what I mean? We do things like that too. I'm sure y'all do that too. And then the last thing to remember, okay, and have the most important the most important thing to remember when you are like, how do I keep my child from being swallowed up by social media, by the outside world, by adults? We know adults out here. It took me to, I'm 42 years old. I always got to count. I'm 42 years old, y'all. Um, and it wasn't until my late 30s or 40s till I started really getting my life together. I figured it out. Feeling comfortable in my own skin for real. And being happy with myself and like knowing how to set boundaries, knowing how to just just do what feels good to me and make myself happy. It took me a long, long time. Okay? So that being said, we know that our children are learning and figuring things out. And they don't have it all together now either. They need guidance. Okay? So the most important thing to remember when we're trying to say, well, how do I keep my child from being swallowed up by the outside world and by social media is that I, when I say I, I am in you, you say to yourself, I am my child's first and last teacher. I'm my child's first and last teacher. You say this so you can feel empowered. To do the job that needs to be done. Okay? You don't have to be so worried about what the outside world is doing. Because the biggest foundation, the strongest foundation your child has, and the biggest example that your child has on, on how to deal with life comes from you. Okay? So, instead of fighting the outside world, fill your child up. Pour in that love. Pour in that guidance, that support. Get that direction. Our children need structure, y'all. Put the structure and it's customized for each child. Everybody needs something different, okay? So make sure that structure is in place for your children. And pour, 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 pour in the love. And, and things that you feel like you want them to learn. Things they want to learn. What you can expose them to. What experience you can create for them. Man, when they feel good, when they come home to a place where they're like, I'm always learning, I'm always growing. Look what we did yesterday. Look what, oh, I cooked that myself yesterday. Uh, when we go somewhere and Maya's telling somebody we're talking to, my mom grows that in her backyard. You know, we, are, we have a garden in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? That's where they come from. So the outside world has their own stuff going on. But for your child to have a center, for your child to be like, this is who I am and this is where I come from and this is what we do as a family. This is what we have been creating. This is what I think. This is what I feel, right? It's something so valuable. So bring them in. Give them that bear hug we always talk about. Pour into them. Keep their mind occupied. And have one more thing. I know I said one more thing, but this is important. Work on your child's language. Have your child talk about themselves in a positive way all the time. Have, you, have your child hearing great things all the time. I'm going to send out a video. I was listening to Steve Harvey, a motivation video um, about Steve Harvey from Steve Harvey this morning. I'm sending it to all the moms in my program and all this, my students too. And all the moms and students that were in my program, I'm about to find them. You know, we still talk. We still text from time to time. We still talk to each other through social media. You know what I mean? And joke with each other and everything. Keep up. But I'm about to go to everybody and send this out. Because we want our children to be focused on their greatness. We want what they're thinking about to be something that's an investment in themselves and their own self-growth. Okay, so make sure that you understand that that is your job. Not only is your job, that's one of your gifts. You are your child's mother. There's nobody else. Okay, you have a special connection with your child. 
So anything you give your child and, and teach your child is, is coming from love and it's coming from a, a place of growth, then the outside world don't stand a chance, honey. That's just people. All right? You got this. I love y'all so much. I'm going to head out here and go to the store. And I got the video to send out to everybody, right? And then it's going to be time to pick up Maya. And then Jazzy going to come home. And then Jazzy going to ask Maya, what you eat for lunch today? Maya going to say pizza. And then Jazzy going to be like, me too. They always do this every Friday. <laughs> they do this every Friday. And our weekend will start. My girls, every time I turn around, I'm like, I say all the time, I find myself saying, this is all I want. This is all I want right here. When me and the girls are in the backyard with our hands in dirt, I'll be like, this is all I want. When me and Jazzy was putting up the little plastic, uh, the greenhouse back um, back there, and Maya was in her scooter racing up and down, right? We like, hey! She bounced into the greenhouse. You know what I'm saying? Hey, go over there and do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is all I want. This is all I want. When we in the chilling, or I, I'm in the bed, and the girls come in, and they come and climb in the bed with me, and we watching TV, we turn off the lights and talk in the dark. We don't even like to do that. My husband don't like to just sit in the dark talking. That's us. That's our thing. This is all I want. And when the girls are at school and I'm, hang I'm hanging with my husband and we talking to each other and we cracking up laughing about stuff and talking about stuff that only we feel like we could talk to each other about, this is all I want. You know what I mean? So do things that make you feel good and fulfilled with your family and, and experience that with them. So bring your kids in close. Let them learn from the outside world, but don't let the outside world be their teacher. That's you. You got this. I love y'all so much. Believe in yourself. Believe in your child. And always remember that growth is unlimited. Mariah, thanks for hanging with me today, girl. Love you so much. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>